let's move on to that, actually. Um, now, um, over the past few months, we've seen uh, positive data for nivulumab, a PD-1 inhibitor, also cabozantinib, um, a VEGF and MET uh, axle inhibitor, and we'll talk about that one in the next segment. Um, but let's move on to PD-1 inhibitors and nivulumab. Nizar, do you want to talk about that? Sure. I think, you know, nivulumab uh, was just uh, FDA approved uh, on November 23rd. Uh, in the U.S. Uh, based on the Checkmate uh, 025 study, uh, which uh, is a large phase three trial of 821 patients randomized uh, to either nivolumab uh, or everolimus. They chose everolimus uh, as the comparator because this is a trial that recruited patients who had prior VEGFR TKI. They allowed up to three maximum uh, uh, prior therapies to VEGFR TKI, and uh, the primary endpoint for the study was OS. And this is uh, an impressive trial because it was conducted uh, uh, in, a f in a fairly uh, reasonable time. And the primary endpoint uh, was met in that patients who were treated with nivolumab had a superior survival to patients who received uh, everolimus. And the uh, hazard ratio was 0 0.73. That is a reduction, 27% reduction in the risk of death for patients who are treated with nivolumab compared to everolimus. Uh, interestingly, in, in that trial, the progression-free survival, which was a secondary endpoint, uh, was uh, not different between the two arms, although the objective response rate was uh, in favor of uh, nivolumab, 25% versus 5%. That difference was statistically significant. So uh, there is a lot of uh, you know discussion going around in the circles of renal cell carcinoma as how we explain the the uh, uh, benefit with OS and objective response rate and not PFS. Uh, this trial, uh, obviously, it's, it's a good thing for our patients that we have mm. a, a new agent that has a new uh, mechanism of action uh, that is showing survival. And the hope is that not only it shows a survival advantage, uh, as it did, but that there will be a plateau at the end of the uh, tail of the, at the end of the curve, that that plateau of, you know, maybe 10, 15 percent of the patients who will have a durable response and hopefully uh, cure. So the Checkmate 0 to 5 study is the first trial showing survival advantage in the salvage setting. Of course, the other trial that showed survival advantage was the global ARC trial in the first line with Thermosirolimus uh, in the poor risk uh, and intermediate risk patients. So I think this is opening a new field new uh, door to uh, immunotherapy in uh, RCC, as well as now it is in many other tumor types. Mm -hmm. This is an important point that uh, I was mentioning before. These patients progressed in four months in both arms, okay? PFS was not different, okay? So that's something to be explained, even though the response rate was a lot higher with nivolumab. Uh, the question is, what kind of therapy these patients received afterwards? Were those therapies equal in both arms? Uh, what is uh, the immunotherapy doing that actually is making patients to respond better to other therapies that these patients re received? So there are a number of things that we have not been recording in clinical trials. Well, the, the, uh, the other element to it, the other element to it, is that median PFS in this sort yeah. of study is a really rubbish endpoint. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the important thing is are the landmark analyses. Um, and, and, and because of that tail on, on, on the curve, and we know we give immunotherapy in the hope of generating durable, durable remissions. So um, it's a minority of patients on the 025 study who may be experiencing that. The two-year upcoming survival analysis will give us that much that more possible. follow-up, and that's going to be really important to see whether we get the same sort of shape curve mm -hmm. in, in renal as we do with other diseases. But I think it's really important we don't get fixed on median PFSs mm -hmm. when particularly looking at immunotherapies. If we're going to talk about PFS improvement, look at hazard ratio for PFS, you know, or look at landmark analyses or both. I, but don't get too worried. I'm not too worried I, I about agree. the medium PFS. I <laughs> entirely agree, but the question remains, uh, we don't know what therapies these patients received after progression, and that's an important it question. Some, though. It's some, something some. that's uh, it's probably going to be presented but in another the, meeting. The, the point being that this information mm -hmm. is obviously critical in order mm -hmm. to establish, the, yeah. and maybe even considering raising the issue that immunotherapy actually modifies the response to further agents. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the, 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 the concept that immune therapy 
is uh, beneficial to patients with extending their survival is not just unique to the immune checkpoint inhibitors. Like if you, if we all remember the uh, Seplucil T uh, vaccine in patients with castrate-resistant prostate, prostate cancer, cancer, there there was a four-month improvement in survival. Now in the checkpoint zero to five, it was 5.4 months, but there too there was improvement in OS that was not. Uh, commensurate or uh, associated with an improvement in PFS or PSA reduction. So I think there is something about the immune Different. system. When you give mm -hmm. an immune therapy that revs up the immune system, uh, even if the tumor doesn't shrink, that patient mm -hmm. is no longer under the assault or, or the uh, aggression of the cancer. They're living longer even though the tumor is maybe uh, progressing. But I, I think that the rhesus criteria are completely unuseful in important. immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. We already know from other tumors, including melanoma, that, that uh, lesions can, can become much, much larger if you di dissect them, if you resect them. You will see infiltration of T cells and what, what have you. Um, and if you just apply the rhesus criteria, you would say, wow, this is a, a huge PFS. Stopping treatment or going beyond the formal progression criteria will still give you a remission with a strong immunotherapy. It takes quite a while before the immune system is able to attack the tumor. It's a completely different mode of action. And um, so you can even have your toxicity and your colitis two years after stopping your, your monoclonal antibodies. So I think we have to look at these set of checkpoint inhibitors or... In a different way. I think that's true for, for effectively minimally active or modestly active, I should say, immunotherapy. When you've got highly active immunotherapy, in other words, what I mean by that is sizable proportions of, of, of patients, 30, 40, 50 percent of patients response having benefit. Response. Yeah. Actually, it, in melanoma, again, um, we, 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 um, we find that rhesus criteria are more useful than we oh, thought I, they I were. St so I, I think so it, may be that it, it may be that in renal, obviously, no, the, the thing about nivolumab, obviously, number one, it's really important for that minority of patients who are having benefit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really 20, important. 25. Um, and hopefully they'll be durable. But it is that minority. Mm -hmm. right? We've still got 80% of renal patients yeah. who are not having durable yeah, benefit 20, with immunotherapy. So the, 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 the key thing for our patients is to develop on that and see if we can increase the proportion of patients having benefit. And when we, whether it's with some of the things we're going to talk about soon, combination immunotherapies, or um, uh, I think what we'll find is that as we push the proportion of patients who are benefiting up, mm -hmm. we'll find that we'll, we're able to see most of that benefit in terms of response rate with rhesus and, and get less twitched well, about immune mm -hmm. response criteria, I mean, which were uh, important when we were treating patients with Ipilimumab in, for melanoma with only 10 or 15 percent of patients having benefit. As soon as we're using PD-1 inhibitors or combination uh, checkpoint inhibitors in melanoma, actually you see it with resist responses mm. in 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 almost everybody. Not everybody, but but, no, but, but I do point. think that melanoma is completely different from kidney cancer. If you test melanoma, melanoma patients, the T cells, the um, T cells that are able to detect and to kill destroy um, class one uh, peptides coming from the melanoma cells are there, are easy to, to get out of any yeah. patient, whether it's the tumor, uh, whether it's the lymph node, whether it's the blood. It's completely different uh, in kidney cancer. Yeah, so I, you I, cannot I, compare kidney cancer with melanoma. No, I wasn't making a direct comparison, but it was more about how, number one, how we interpret immunotherapy data. Yeah. And I think there are some important lessons because yeah. we've been through that learning sure. curve with melanoma. Yeah. Mm. And it's about how in, one interprets those curves. And then secondly, just just learning from the fact that the way we assess responses yeah. um, changes as you develop more and more active immunotherapy agents. Those were the only parallels I was So there is, new there is new effort, collaborative effort uh, now aimed at defining, uh, coming up with a new uh, system for tumor response uh, in lieu of uh, the resist that we've been commonly using. And that's called the immune-related the immune, mm. uh, uh, response assessment. But I think, you know, the discordance between objective response rate of 25% 
uh, versus 5%, and the no difference in the PFS still has to be explained. And it could be that there is the concept or the observation that we've made in melanoma as well as in RCC that is uh, uh, based on the pseudo progression concept of, you know, what you mentioned, Suzanne, the, mm. the infiltration of the T cells, uh, the infection of the tumor by the T cells, causing the uh, tumor to increase in size initially, even new lesions appearing. Uh, that are not really metastatic, but more the infiltration, again, the T, t cells. And because perhaps many patients have been, uh, st have stopped their therapies or their therapies were stopped because of that progression initially, uh, and, and they were called progressors, but they yet they benefited, even though they by resist progressed, they benefited and therefore they survived longer. So I think if you look at the Kaplan-Meier curves, there is really no question that the survival uh, you, Dan, if you look at the couple of markers, right, there is a, a, the divergence of the trials. The two couple of markers are divergent right from the beginning. So everybody is benefiting, even if by resist they had progressive disease. So the, this therapy is doing something to the immune system that's uh, making the patient live longer. It's like certainly both. very exciting to have these therapies. Um, and now with nivolumab uh, as a PD-1 inhibitor, uh, now it's FDA approved, I think we have a lot to learn in terms of what de defining what is progression um, and, uh, and how to use it in treatment beyond progression. There's an abstract on that as well.